If you ever felt overwhelmed by the idea of diving into a book in a language other than your own, you're not alone. Today I'm fluent in English, French and three native languages of India. My journey to be fluent in these languages was not easy. So today I'll be sharing with you five misconceptions that you can encounter when you're trying to read in a book that's outside of your native language. So the first misconception is that you have to wait until you reach a certain level to actually start reading a book. So it could be A1, A2 or B1, B2. But that's really not the case. Even if you're at A1 level, you can start with certain books. So I would say that it really depends on the types of books that you want to read. So for example, if you are at an A1 level, you can start reading a children's book. For example, Le Petit Prince. Or something that I like to do is to actually read the books that I've already read in English to read them in French. And this way I already know the story so it's easier to understand all the characters and the whole story as well. So if you've already read Harry Potter in your native language, you can now start reading that in your target language. I wouldn't advise you to start reading literature, for example, in your target language because that will just be impossible for you to understand even at a B2 level. And if you do this, it would be really demotivating for you and then you would want to stop reading entirely. So this is really something that you should avoid. Also at the beginning, you might not completely understand everything that's going on in the story. So it's not that important to know every single line and every single word, but to understand the gist of the whole story. The second misconception is that you need to know X amount of words to be able to start reading. Now this is really not true because even if I say I'm 100% fluent in English or French, I don't know all the words in English and French. So even if you read a sentence, and there are a lot of complex words that you don't understand, I wouldn't advise you to look at each and every word in the dictionary because this would be much more time consuming for you. This would then lead you to entirely giving up on reading that book. So I always like to understand the story as a whole and not by detailing each paragraph. And if this still doesn't help, you can then look up the 50 most common words and verbs used in your target language and memorize these words and then start reading this would then help you understand way better. The third misconception is that if I don't understand a certain paragraph, I can no longer read and that I need to know each and every grammatical detail in order to actually understand the whole story. A very helpful tip that I read is that you read 20 pages of one book and then you see if you understand that book. If you don't, then move on to another book. Read another 20 pages of it move on to another one. Do this at least five times and at the fifth book you would then really understand the story of it. And this is really a brute force method so you have to keep yourself motivated. So if you get demotivated really easily, just remind yourself that there are other books that you can read. It's just because you didn't understand the first five books, don't give up. You can always read another book that will be easier for you to understand. And in this way, you also understand the style of the language as well as how sentences are constructed. So the fourth misconception is about intensive versus extensive reading and the fact that one is better than the other. So firstly, intensive reading is when readers read each and every page in a book and from the words and phrases that they don't understand, they then look into a dictionary. On the other hand, extensive reading is when you read the whole chapter and then you try to understand the gist of it. So even if there are sentences and phrases that you don't understand, you're not too bothered by it and you don't let it demotivate you. Now, I would say I'm really somewhere in the middle. I don't like if I don't understand a lot of the words and phrases. So if I start becoming overwhelmed, I then like to be a bit more intensive and really like to understand really what's going on in this story. But for the rest of the part, I'm more of an extensive reader. And this is something that I experienced with. So I wouldn't really say one is better than the other, but it's really something that you have to find out on your own. So when you start reading in a book that's not your native language, really try both of these methods and see what works best for you. The fifth misconception is that I have to translate each and every word or phrases back to my native language in order to fully understand it. This is something that I used to do before as well, but then I stopped after a point when I realized that not everything can be really translated back to my native language because of the cultural nuances as well as the expressions that are really so specific to that culture that it cannot be translated in all languages. And this way you also try to understand from the point of view of your target language and you will also develop a deeper understanding of the language as well as gain some insights that you didn't know before. As JK Rowling said, 
Something very magical happens when you read a good book. So remember, you have to enjoy the language learning process and enjoy the process of learning to read again because this is how it feels when you start to read in a language other than your native language. So let me know in the comments down below what are your favorite techniques of reading a book that's outside of your native language. And I'll see you in the next one. Happy reading!